Okay, so you've got your book in paperback. You've got your book in ebook format. What's next? Have you thought about audio? Want to learn more? Stick around. Hey everybody, it's Keith Wheeler with kwheelerbooks.com and ReviewMate's Facebook group. Ever since I recently posted about the success of my audiobooks for my children's book series, I've had a huge amount of inquiries as to how to set up audiobooks. So I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how I set up books on ACX. So I'm going to flip the screen around and show you exactly how to do it. The first thing you're going to do is go to ACX.com and you're going to log in. If you have any kind of Amazon account whatsoever, that is the username and password that you're going to use. Now, if you haven't set up your ACX account quite yet, it's going to ask you some personal information uh, as far as you, it'll auto set up some of it like your name, uh, but then it's going to ask you, are you an author or a narrator? It's going to ask you your address and some other information. So just fill all that out. And then when you're all done, you'll get to the screen. And when you're at this screen, this is where you can create a new title. So if your book is already on Amazon, whether through Kindle format or paperback, then it's a lot easier because most of the information is already there. So I'm going to add a new title and it's going to search for my name as an author through the Amazon database. So I'm going to pick, this is my book, so I'm going to click this one. And then it's going to ask, how can ACX help you? There's three different options. Either you can say you're looking for a narrator. You can say you already have the files. You just need to upload it and sell it, or you want to be your own narrator. Now, I personally don't like the sound of my voice, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, my children's books. I don't really have a good childish voice. So I'm going to go with, I'm looking for someone to narrate and produce my audiobook. Besides they have the expensive equipment. I don't want to go through all that. It's going to ask you to sign an agreement, read through it thoroughly. It is a binding agreement. I've already read it numerous times, so I'm just going to click agree and complete. Um, now it pulls the information from Amazon that it already has, like your about my book section. Obviously you can change this, but this is what is already on Amazon. So I'm going to leave it. It wants the copyright owner and that's me the copyright years 2017 the audiobook copyright owner that's me again now it wants to know some information about your book is your book fiction or nonfiction well this particular book is a nonfiction book What's the best category for the book? And as you can see, there are plenty of different options. I'm going to click sports since this is actually a sports journal. Now it wants me to describe my ideal narrator, male, female, or both. Do I not care? I'm going to select both because I want to open up my possibility of narrators as much as I can. What kind of, what language do I want? I'm going to stick with English. Do I want them to have an accent? As you can see, there are numerous accents to choose from. I'm going to keep it simple and just put a, an American general accent. Uh, the voice age, you know, even though obviously it's going to be an adult, do I want them to sound like a young child, a tween, a teenager, um, an elderly person? I'm going to just put an adult. And what kind of vocal style? Do you want them to sound like an announcer? Do you want it to be childlike, comedic? Um, again, so many different options. I'm going to, I want them to be enthusiastic and excited. 
in here I put any additional comments I have this is where I have the this is kind of my sales pitch to narrators I want them to audition obviously I want to get as many narrators to audition as possible because that just betters my chances of getting the the best quality product so this is where I'm gonna put my my salesman hat on and tell them you know why I why they should want to narrate my book uh, not only you know maybe tell them a little bit about the story but about me as an author what's my platform how many followers do I have how many you know what different social media am I on all of that I'm gonna put into this additional comments then the most important part of the audition is of course the audition script if you have a children's book like like my two that are currently on audio uh, you can they want it to be no more than two or three pages long obviously you're not going to include pictures so it's very possible that your entire book is going to be the audition script now if you have a novel that you have then you're gonna to have to be more more detailed and think about what you want in your audition script you do not want to just put your first chapter of your book you want to make sure that everything that is that your book encompasses whether it's action whether it's romance what all the different scenes all the different characters you want to mix and match excerpts from your entire book and put them into this audition script that way you can hear this narrator do several different voices so you can hear them do an action scene of you know a, a scene that's more romantic maybe a, if there's a a scene that is supposed to be somber you want to make sure that you get in that narration script you know when they do their their tape you want to get as much of that feel of your book in that audition script so that way the audition tape gives you the well-rounded version of your book that this narrator can do because it, you put the first chapter in there and you you like this person and so you hire them and then at the end of this you know when they're done with the whole project you realize they suck when it comes to doing you know hot, fast paced fighting sequences or something like that that's something that you want to try to avoid at all costs because one it's wasting their time as a narrator spending 40 hours to produce your five or six hour book and then you find out yeah you need to do all that over again so uh, the the audition script is extremely important and in here is where you just put some script notes maybe give them a little bit of background especially if you're going to be um, cutting and pasting excerpts from your book in here you can give them kind of an idea of what the story is about and then you're going to upload your file now I'm just gonna pick any file cuz kind of in a hurry so anything that's a word document a PDF or a text file they'll take they're just gonna scan it for viruses obviously it doesn't have virus Now my next page asks me the word count of my book. It doesn't have to be exact down to the words, but obviously you want it to be as specific as possible because that's how they're gonna gauge the number of hours your end product is going to be. Narrators need to know that so that way they know if they can fit it into their schedule or if it's something that they're not really interested in. So I'm gonna put 1500 words. So that's gonna be, according to this, you know, a 12 minute you know two tenths of an hour so a 12 minute uh, long final video what rights do I have by territory I have world rights so I'm gonna leave that now comes the next important part which is how are we go how are you gonna pay this narrator basically comes down to budget do you have a budget typically about a hundred dollars a finished hour is the norm from what I've seen now what a finished hour means is this number right here 
That's your approximate finished hour. So if this says five hours, at $100 a finished hour, you're gonna pay them $500. Now, it may take them 40 hours as a narrator to record and, and do all the background stuff that they have to do, but you're not paying them for that. You just pay them for the final product. So you're gonna pay them X amount of dollars per finished hour. Now, if you, and if that's the case, you do the pay for production. And you specify, I will pay X amount of dollars per finished hour. So, or you can, if you don't have a budget, you can do what's called royalty share, which is what I've done. And what royalty share is, it costs you zero dollars up front, and you're just gonna split your royalties for the next seven years on this book, 50-50 with the narrator. Great thing about that is obviously it costs you zero dollars up front. There's no risk involved for you. The downside is, is there's a huge risk on the side of the narrator. The narrator is basically taking all the risk and spending all this time narrating a book that may not sell at all. And because of that, you will get, if you do 50, if you do the royalty share, you will get a lot fewer auditions because there's a lot less people out there willing to take that risk. Now there are some still some really really great narrators that either still do you know a lot of royalty shares. Uh, some will set aside okay well I'm going to do one royalty share project a month. So you can definitely get some great narrators. But just understand going into it that your your narrator pool is going to be diminished if you do a royalty share. The other downside to royalty shares is um, when you do a royalty share, just like if you do KDP Select, you are agreeing to exclusivity. Now with royalty share, distribution is exclusive to Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. So um, you're, you know, it's not just Amazon. But, you know, you are still limiting your reach. And again, this is for, um, for a full seven years. So it's not, just, it's not just now. So that's something to definitely consider. The plus side is, is you get 40% royalty. So when you do your split, that 40% royalty is 20% for you, 20% for the narrator. If you decide to do pay for production, you don't have to be exclusive, which brings me down to the next option, which is how you want to distribute. Again, if you do royalty share, you have to be exclusive, which means you get 40%. But if you do the pay for production, you can still decide to be exclusive and get the 40%. But you also have the option to be non-exclusive, which means, you know, they'll sell it, they'll still sell it through Amazon, Audible, and iTunes through ACX, but you also can put it in any other format you want. The downside is you're only getting 25% royalties. So it all depends on the main, the main determining factor is your budget. If you have a budget, then doing the paid for production is, will behoove you the best because it gives you more flexibility. Even if you decide to do non-exclusive and you only get 25% royalties, because you're not doing a royalty share, that's still greater than the 20% you would get being exclusive. So again, just things to consider. Both of my books, I have done a royalty share because you know I'm still a new author. I, you know, I I want to have as little. Um, invested in this aspect as possible so I can save the budget I do have for my promotions and advertising and creating of the book cover and and editing and stuff like that so you know if you've got more money to, to spend that's great uh, definitely something to consider So then the final thing is I just need to review 
what they have. The estimated length, I'm doing royalty shares, my estimated word count, the language I picked, yes, I'm gonna be exclusive, and I have world territories. And then down here is the, the title information, uh, the genre, the, you know, it's nonfiction, and then the information for the narrators. You know, that I want it to be English. I don't care if it's male or female. I want it to be, to sound like an adult um, with just a general American accent, but I want them to be enthusiastic and excited. And then this is just the information about my title that it pulled from Amazon. So then I'm gonna to post to ACX. Once you've posted it, then the narrators will get an email telling them that there's a new project to be bid on. And then they're going to go in, they're going to read your audition script. First, they're going to look and see if they're, you know, if it's royalty shares, is that something they're interested in? Um, the, if you didn't do royalty shares, they're going to check and see is that, you know, that amount per finished hour, something that they can handle. If it's something they're interested in, then they'll look at your audition script. Uh, they'll look at the accent. Is that something they do? And then they'll record it. It'll probably take a couple days, maybe even a week, before you start getting any auditions come through. So don't freak out that you know it's been a week and you haven't heard anything. You know when when it comes to to audiobooks, obviously things are going to take a little bit longer because they have to to familiarize with the script. They have to record it. They have to do you know the the sound tweaking and stuff like that to remove the clicks and pops and all that other stuff that the narrators do. That luckily, as an author, you don't have to worry about. Unless you decide to do your own narration, which I don't do. And as auditions start to come in, you'll get an email as well as on your main page, your main dashboard, there will be, right now it says zero new auditions. You'll have multiple auditions listed. And then you'll click on that and it will bring up each audition. It will tell you the narrator and there'll be a play button you play and you listen to the audition. If it's something, something that you absolutely have no interest in, in, obviously you can feel free to decline it. If it's one that you think is a possibility, go through them, listen to them multiple times. Maybe have a spouse or a friend or someone look, listen to them as well. So you get as, um, as much in input as you can. Once you narrow it down to a few then you can click on the narrator's name and it'll bring you to the narrator's ACX page where you will see different audio clips from different projects that they've done so you can get a better idea of the range of voices and um, and tempos and accents that they have so you can see what they're used to and, and what they are capable of and then when you finally find one that you absolutely like, then you will submit an offer. And that's when, if they accept it, that's when you'll um, start working on setting up the two milestones. Milestone number one is the first 15 minutes. And then after you approve the first 15 minutes, then the next milestone is the final book. So. I hope that helped you learn a little more about ACX and how to set up your first audiobook through ACX. The most important part is to just do it. Just take a chance. I mean, you got nothing to lose. If you don't find an, a narrator that you like, then you just don't go any further. I also will say when you do find a narrator that you like, make sure that you message them. You can message them through ACX. There's a great uh, messaging system through them and you know, communicate as much as possible between you and and the narrator uh, I do that especially when it comes to setting schedules setting when the first 15 minutes should be available when the final product should be available talk to them obviously you're the one that's you're the client but understand that you're not their only client and so you want to make sure that you set reasonable expectations by, by talking to them, not only do you set up a really good camaraderie between the two of you, but also that you 
by not setting unrealistic expectations, you get a much better quality product. You don't want them rushing through something that you're literally going to have to sit on for the next seven years. So take the time out of KDP and and CreateSpace and any other platform that you use. Audio books are going to be a much longer process, but they're worth it in the end. Like I said, even if you don't, even if you only sell one or two, that's one or two you would not have sold if you didn't do it. So again, take the chance. It's If you do the 50-50 royalty split, there's absolutely no cost whatsoever. It, I mean, it just costs you time. That's about it. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave the comments below. You can also visit me at kwheelerbooks.com and the Review Mates Facebook group. Uh, that group is is growing exponentially, and you know it's it's a great group of people that uh, that speak openly and are very active in the group. So love to see you over there as well. Until next time, remember to write right. Bonus tip: After you've done loading up your audiobook and it's been approved by ACX and it's on, actually on Amazon, you can ask ACX for 25 promo codes and they're free coupon, coupon codes that you can give to potential listeners and they can download your book for free, which is a great way to get some additional reviews. Also, if as of today's recording, which is November 2017, if they don't already have an Audible account, you can give them basically an affiliate link to a 30-day trial. And there's a basic, they call it a bounty, where you'll actually get $50 for everybody that does that. So they're getting a free 30-day trial period, a free copy of your audiobook, and you're still getting Fifty dollars. Now, if you're doing the royalty share, obviously you're only going to get twenty-five of that. The other twenty-five will go to your narrator. So again, another easy, free way to make more money. Until next time.